We're talking about process automation approaches today. So we have an agenda here that's fairly lengthy. Um, one of the things I want to help you understand is that we have as a mission here uh, for this particular certification in digital transformation, digital business stuff, four courses. The first one was on Monday, which is the introduction. Second one was yesterday, which is low code, no code. Today, we're talking about the uh, process automation and then we have uh, the UI kind of things. So um, helping you understand what we're trying to accomplish here, think of it as these fields are so large and so complicated and, and so rapidly changing that our mission, in our opinion at least, is to try to bring you what I call curated content. So there's probably nothing earth shattering that you couldn't find if you wanted to spend the time looking for it and consolidating it and so forth that you're gonna to learn today. But we've done that work for you and tried to put it in a way that makes logical sense and helps you understand. If nothing else, when you walk away from this course, I'd like you to be able to have a conversation with your peers and others that you wanna talk about these things with in an intelligent manner, which is to say, you don't just have to say, hmm, yeah, that's a word I think I've heard of. You'll have heard of the word and have a little bit of a, a sense of a definition or an introduction to it. And you'll feel some comfort in talking about some of these ideas, even though many of them are kind of leading edge. So that's what I'm hoping to do. How are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna start with an introduction to process automation, and then we're going to look at the landscape surrounding how process automation has grown up. We'll take some time with pro both process mining and robotic process automation, RPA. Then we're gonna look at where most of the process automation work is being done from a custom application point of view, which is model-driven development. In our case, we're going to use BPMN because this is after all BPM Institute's fundamental uh, curriculum. Um, we'll look at how to transform models from the kind that most people have been building, which are pictures of what they think their uh, processes look like, to ones that can actually be run in an automated fashion through an engine. And there's some real differences there. We'll spend a little bit of time talking about the low code, no code culture, how, what are APIs and orchestration and how, why they're important. We'll talk about automation at scale because it's one thing to make something work for a small little environment. It's another to run it coast to coast or worldwide. We'll talk about how IT is affected by productivity using BPMN automation. We'll take a brief look at the idea of minimum viable product development. And we'll talk about how citizen developers can be involved with model-driven programming. And then finally, at the end of the day, we'll take a look at some conclusions and some suggestions about where we may wanna go next. So the specific course, has some specific objectives. As I was saying before, the first thing we want to do is get you updated on the current process automation landscape. We want you to understand the place for hyper automation, process mining, RPA, and model different programming in your organization, if indeed there is one. Better understand the current API forward development culture. The way we build programs is changing and it's changing rapidly. And the concept there is, is often referred to as API forward. And we wanna delve into make or buy considerations for low code, no code um, as part of your automation process. We're gonna show you how to build or transform BPM mo BPMN models with the intention of executing them. So rather than drawing a picture of them and putting them on your desk or your credenza or your boss's desk or the committee's desk or whatever, where they just accumulate dust for the next five years, there are ways of building these that you can actually push a button and make them run. We wanna also talk about how to connect process models to commercial in-house systems. Everybody's got legacy systems. We run our business day to day, that's how it works. 
um, if we're going to be able to successfully include new technologies into these technology stacks, they have to work with what we have in addition to being bringing in new modern technologies. Um, as I said, scaling is really important. The ability to run something in a small operation or an entrepreneurial shop is entirely different than running a giant uh, worldwide network. And there are methods by which we scale things that are useful to learn about, at least from an understanding point of view. And we want to get a better understanding of how automating BPM models affect both IT and citizen developers.